and the time came to talk about stars. And before we talk about many other billions of stars out there, why not start with the star that is closest to us, the one that we actually love the most, because without it we would not exist, and that is our star, the sun. And why not start with a joke? Um, so uh, here we have uh, sun eclipsed by the moon. Remember how they have the same angular size. They are not the same physically, but the sun is much larger physically, but also much further away. But anyway, they do seem to be the same, so in their angle, right? So moon and sun, same angular size. How about this situation? It says here we have a sun eclipsed by a moon mass black hole. Well, that is a tiny dot. We will learn later on how to actually calculate the size of a black hole. So basically, no eclipse at all. And then uh, the third situation, that's pure silly stuff. Okay, we're never going to find the uh, giant banana or giant uh, sunglasses, but it's fine. All right, so our star, the sun, and one of the very first questions we're going to try to address is why is it that it is so hot? Why is it that it shines? And for how long maybe? Or maybe it's good to uh, remember that it did it, uh, you know, for so long. That's probably going to help us figure out what is it that's made of, what produces all that energy, basically and light that we see. So um, here's the, the question that we need to remember, right? So um, any guess here? Uh, how old is the sun? So I would say here about 5 billion years, right? Or 25 million years or 10,000 years or 400 million years. Um, I would say the sun should be at least as old as the earth, right? And remember from our very first chapter, uh, this is pretty much how old is the earth. So if the sun did what it's doing now, it must have done it for at least five or so billion years. So I thought about that and considered a variety of um, possibilities for what creates all that energy. So one would be, well, maybe there is a lot of fuel that is on fire, either burning coal or wood or whatever. So people thought, okay, so you have um, a, any kind of chemical energy, right? So they, they calculated given the total mass of the sun. And by the way, that can be calculated with Newton's version of Kepler's third law, right? And you can actually calculate the mass without knowing what kind of mass that is. So you calculate the mass, and then you can calculate the energy, the total chemical energy, if you say, okay, this would be the most efficient fuel, type of fuel, and then uh, compare that with the luminosity, right, or total power output. And just as a reminder, power is energy per each second, so energy per time. So if you do that, um, ratio between the total energy from the mass, the chemical mass, whatever that chemicals uh, can burn 
the most efficiently, you are going to end up with this much. All right, so the sun would not exist the way we know it for more than 10,000 years. So basically, the answer is no, this is not what makes the sun shine. Another possibility is that, well, there's a lot of mass, so, you know, it's going to be a lot of gravitational pull and therefore energy and we can calculate it and we're not we are not going to go through those kind of calculations but we can calculate that energy and again compared to the total power output and the result is well if that is a way of producing energy that's only going to last for about 25 million years so again not enough so that means gravity not a good source of energy for the sun now okay and then at some point in, uh, I guess it was 1905, Einstein came up with the idea that the mass actually can be converted into energy. And we are actually going to talk about exactly how that formula applies here. And based on those calculations, we realized that there is actually in the core of the sun, in the very, very center, there are nuclei of hydrogen that came together actually four of them and form helium and because there is a difference between the mass of the helium and those four protons or uh, nuclei of hydrogen okay there is a difference and that is uh, actually negative right so these four protons or nuclei of hydrogen uh, are more massive, right? So it's larger than the output, the mass of helium, right? And so uh, there is, you know, an excess of mass thanks to this energy, thanks to this reaction, and that is converted into energy and that again can be calculated compared to how much power output we get from the Sun and we get a number that bingo kind of fits so that only tells us that the Sun has been doing what is doing right now for about five billion years okay and there will be five billion years more to go for the Sun to continue to do these things. Basically, the sun is pretty stable. It's been doing what it's what what's doing right now for five billion years again. And right, so for about 10 billion years, it's supposed to shine the way it's doing it now. It did it for about five billion years. It's gonna uh, continue to do it for about five billion years, kind of like a midlife crisis right now. Why is it that the sun is so stable? It's all because of the balance between the radiation pressure, right? So there are photons that are created in the very core and they come with energy and the pull inward of the gravity so pressure from gravity okay so they're pulling kind of like a stack of pillow right so this is all gas actually mostly hydrogen and helium, okay? 
and imagine you stack pillows of gas, right? Just fluffy things. You stack them, you stack them at some point, all that stack is going to become actually shorter and shorter because uh, the inner layers are going to be squashed, right? So very similar to, say, the idea that you're never going to go for that fluffy uh, sweater from the bottom of the pile of sweaters in the store. You don't want that. You want the fluffy ones. So, you know, you don't want the gravity to have worked on it that much already. So this is how the gravity uh, works. And the more, the higher the stack of gas or the pillows, right? So the pillows kind of go like this, right? Those are the layers of gas and you keep going and it's going to be really squashed. in the core. So, well, a note here, the gravitational contraction was actually very important when the sun was forming. It provided energy and heated the core. And because of that heat, you know, that uh, those nuclear reactions uh, happened in the core. So core, it's where nuclear reactions happen, right? And those nuclear reactions are the ones that create these hot photons, right? Or the energy created in the very core. Okay, now it's enough hydrogen in the core for um, for uh, that reaction of hydrogen to helium, actually four of the hydrogen nuclei going to helium, to fuse and shine fuse, so that's the fusion reaction, to fuse and shine, therefore create those hot photons and counteract the gravitational inward pull for about 10 billion years. Again, we're not going to go through those calculations, but the important thing is that there is a so-called gravitational equilibrium that keeps its core hot and dense enough to release energy through nuclear fusion, again, for about 10 billion years. <laughs>